Today, we're going to talk about how to start a business in 2018. But before we get into how to start a business in 2018, we need to discuss what type of business are you going to start? That is probably one of the most perplexing things there is. I want to make some money. I want to start a business. But I don't really know where to start. Do I start with the LLC? Do I start with uh, the business? Do I start making money? Well, I'm going to break down all of those steps in this video. And I'm going to give you some food for thought and a blueprint. Now, one of the ways that we're going to give you a blueprint is this. Yes, we're going to get into the Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills in today's deal is the 24-hour startup. And to make it easy, yes, it is less than, it's like, well, I think it was one ninety nine, so it's more than 50% off. And to get that deal, you go under the video and you hit that link and you don't have to put a coupon code or none of that stuff in there. And you just go ahead and get it. And I will change that later on tonight. So anyone that's coming in that wants to start a business, this will give you even deeper blueprints and guidelines on what to do in case you want to start a physical product business, hustling on Craigslist and such, or you want to get into the big boy business, 30 days to 2,500. So that is there for you to gather. The link is under the video. Now, let's get into what type of business should you start. This is Glendon Cameron founder of Hustlers Kung Fu University, where your real financial education begins. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our little iPad, and we're going to put this here. Now, th there's only so many kind of businesses that you can have. You're going to have a physical product. business and that would include items and food you, you got that's that's pretty much covering that then you're gonna have a service business you do stuff for people and then you're gonna have a venture business which is something like Amazon that requires a lot of cash to get off the ground and then you're going to have an organic business, which is what I have. These are pretty much the four main business types you can have. I mean, you know, financial services. I mean, you're going to have a physical product, a service business, a venture business, or organic business, which means you use your own money. So that's how that goes. And while I discuss this, now if you're going to do physical products, that is probably one of the least challenging businesses to get into because there's less trust involved. If you're going to get into a service business, you're going to have to probably sell your services very cheaply in the beginning to get that feedback that you'll need. And a venture business, you're going to need a lot of people to have faith in you and invest millions of dollars in an organic business, which you can start with the money in your pocket, but you're not going to be able to scale up very fast because that will be pretty much hampered by your ability to get money. So those are the businesses. Now, I'm going to tell you what I think you should start. The uh, business you should uh, start is a business that you know about, that you, all right, you are in or you have industry 
knowledge. These are the best businesses for anyone to start, but you're going to have a few problems. You'll have people who they may not like the industry because they're bored of it, they're tired of it, but for a greater chance of success, you should start a business that you have knowledge about <clears throat> or you know. And I'm going to explain why this is the case. And I'm going to use myself as an, as a, as a, I guess uh, you could say visual aid. Now, I knew a lot about furniture, still do. And based on that knowledge, I can always make money with furniture. About furniture. I know a lot about residential furniture. I know a lot about antique furniture. And I know a lot about contemporary and modern furniture. Knowing this, I don't have to study up on it. And let's go. No study required. When you know a lot about a particular type of industry, it gives you tremendous self-confidence. You get a lot of self-confidence. Now, I personally don't like the furniture business anymore because it's become you need to be very high-end or you need to be a container buyer. When the container buyer is you're literally having five to 20 containers coming into your store every month. And you're probably doing two to three million a year. You have some financing. It just, I didn't like it. Which kind of brings me to the next point. Which is, let's go here. Um, credit. I know a ton about credit, credit, knowledge, is deep, it's deep. So I can create courses, I can talk about it, I can start a business off of it because I already know. Why do I know about credit? I went through it. My ex-wife did all kinds of stuff. I had people suing me. I had people coming after me. It was crazy. Now, for those of you who are asking questions about credit, I got you know one from Patty. Uh, what you need to do is buy the course because let me let me let me show you some. For those of you who don't know, let me go here because we get a lot of questions and what I have done is I have created, let's go here, let's go here. I've created a playlist of videos that will answer most of your common questions. What card should I get? It's all here. You got to do a little legwork, but it's free. So knock yourself out. Um, typically, any question that you have can be answered there. If you need more oomph, then there's the super credit bundle. Go ahead and grab that. And the link is below the video. All right. So let's get back to this. Now, what you need to do before you start any business is conduct a personal inventory. You need to write down what you already have access to, what you can get, what kind of hookups you have, all of this stuff. Because well, this is what most people do. 
they'll go out and start a business they know nothing about and they've got to spend literally months or in some cases years studying the business so they can make a go at it now let's say you have let's say you want to get into fashion uh, actually let's see I want to get into fashion right uh, yeah but I have a two to five year learning curve. So let's look at that. And this is where most of you are going to be if you're entering into something that is brand new, you don't know about it, you have no clue to how it works, so you're going to have to study. And this is what most people try to do. They try to cram it. They try to study it every day. They read every blog. They watch every YouTube video and they become overwhelmed. There's like this YouTuber, there's this blog. And all of a sudden, you've just got a mental mess on your hands. So by getting into a business you know nothing about, and this isn't to say that you will not be successful. This is to say that the road will be hard. Uh, there are people who've done it. But if you start a business that you already know some about, you have hookups, you have industry knowledge, your chances of being successful in that business are 90 percent versus the 10 percent of you getting into a business you know nothing about. Uh, I was uh, on Peachtree Industrial and there was this car. They were in business 18 months. These folks got some money together, got their dealer's license, got some space. They were selling what I call regular cars. They were selling like Camrys, Toyotas. They had like the Uber car that they were selling. And I just said, this isn't gonna work. Because if you gotta understand, there are different marketplaces. Let's say the marketplace that they wanted. A Ford had a program, Chevy had a program, uh, Nissan had a program, Uber had hookups. I mean, it was just so competitive for them to come in at this basic level with no established business. They would have been better off, well, it'd been hard, opening up a high-end car dealership versus a direct-to-consumers, uh, probably you know people making less than 30 grand, those type of cars, they've been better off because I've noticed that a lot of dealers are making a switch where all they have are high-line cars and high-line used cars because Let's be honest. There's um, who wants who wants a Prius? Who wants a Toyota Corolla? Now understand these are great cars. They last a long time. Toyota's done a great job building them. But do you want to show up in a Corolla or for like two or three thousand dollars more? Do you want to show up in the Benz? So that's part of it. So let's go ahead and see what's going on in the chat room. Uh, we got a bunch of stuff up in here. What's up, regular web guy? Johnny Walton, Young Brandon, Save Your Games, what's up? Kindle Vision, Enrique, Agent J. Poole, Diana Thompson, Erica Watson, the Sheiky Jones, I love that name. Jasmine Nicole, uh, Bell Stacy 770SB, first time coming in. What's going on? Shalise Hambly. Zola, Conscious Either, C.P. Jones, Shadina McCleary, what's up, Nate's Point of View, B.C. Angel Hands, Patches, Lamode, Lieutenant Johnson, D.J. Slink, Archangel, 3579, Mood Motivation, E. Pimp, <laughs> Dylan Blake, Oh, definitely. Uh, the family Oh, YouTube. We in the building. <laughs> Loving the videos about creating the holding company. I think you said we created it as an LLC. Uh, we'll talk about those in another video. Welcome here, family Oh, YouTube. Sarana, what's up? What's up, Gabron? What's up, Raquel? Uh, let's go. Has a lunch of uh, ballers. I did better selling on Craigslist. <laughs> 
Mark Hutchison, lawn care and insurance sales is my knowledge base. If you start a business with those things, you will be more successful. Bell Stacy sounds like Doraville. Uh, Peachtree Industrial. It wasn't Doraville, but it was it was it was on the edge of Brookhaven. But you're right. Nate is right. Is right. I use let go and they are low ballers. Even when it's already low, low, use McCurry and said, what's up, Charlene McKinney? Nate's point of view, work with special needs for 15 years, played college baseball. I'm crushing it now with my coaching and special needs business, but it took me half my life to get there. That's true. Tanker Green, what's up? Toya, what's going on? What's up, Erica Williams? No people. Knowing people is so very important. Subcontractors know when you can get uh, when you get green, eat all up your profits. Mm-hmm. What's up, Mika Long? What's up, Dijon? What's up, Already Won? Same old 100. Stefan. <laughs> DJ Slink. So, all right. So, let's kind of get back to this. Now, how do you decide if the business you already know will make some money? All right, so what you do is call validation. And I'll use myself to explain how that works. Validation. This is part direct response. You do not need a funnel. You do not need an email list. You need five to ten people. Now, what you're going to do is whatever you want to do, whatever business model you have, you want to go to five or 10 of your friends and you want to use this verbiage. Hey, look, uh, I've started a professional business. You do not want to approach them like this is the hookup. This is I, I bring you in for the low low. You do not want them that you want them to respect you. So you go to five or 10 of your people and ask them for money. Now, if five say yes. You got a winner on your hands because these are people who know you. If 10 says yes, that's going to do very well. But if people are kind of like, mm, I don't know, I don't understand, it's not going to work. There's something wrong with your business model. This is a very simple, very cheap way to figure out if your business is going to work before you start buying stuff, before you create a website. You don't really need to do all that. You need to validate first. And this is first stage. Uh We'll just put number one, yeah, first stage. So now if you can get money, I get better, get money out of your friends. and family and I'm about to be a little racial here if you can get money out of your friends and family and you're black you got a solid business model I know that's going to be like kind of messed up but it's just been my experience because uh, from a friend to friend uh, standpoint selling to other black people is extremely hard so if you can get that now if you're white this may not be an accomplishment. This may be like, well, sure, Josh, we'll go ahead and chip in on your business. And that sep that form of validation may not work long term. So what we'll do is second stage validation. Yeah, you get all the stuff here. Second stage validation. You make offers every every day for 60 to 90 days because this is going to give you some information points that you will not get during your first stage validation because your first stage validation could be a fluke. Uh, it could have a lot of people who really like you. And <laughs> so you got to validate it again because there could be culture issues. 
Um, there's so many things that can work against you with just the first stage validation. Uh, let's see, where are we here? What's up, Mika Long? What's up, D. John? Already won. Uh, Apex, happy holiday. Oh, Facebook has literally changed Facebook. Uh, I mean, uh, Facebook has literally put Craigslist out of business, and Craigslist does not seem to be interested in innovating. The Sheiky Jones, I am a LVN in Texas. I was thinking about starting a business looking at an adult daycare, a home companion service. Not sure how to grow something like that if I'm the only employee. Uh, apparently you missed it. There was someone here. I forget her name. She has a job and she set it up in her home and she made 82 grand her first year. I forget her name. Uh, she would be in the comments. I don't think she's here today. Uh, let's see. Service businesses can be easier. Arden Bolden, so true. <laughs> Enrique, what about Hispanic people? Hispanic people are extremely tight. Uh, when they make an offer, they do not come off their lowball offer unless there are second or third generation. First generation throughout the boat, mm -mm, they're not going to budge. And part of that is survival. They know they got to hold on to their money and they got to get extreme value of their money and they ain't going to make it. Uh, let's see. Oh, then, hey, this is the Unvarnished channel. I'll tell you like it is. In my Craigslist book, I have a section talking about how different ethnicities argue. Indians, Hispanics, I put that in there. And the thing is, it's true. But, you know, people are like, well, you're not supposed to say that. Now, this is not to be conflated with what Trump said. Trump said some extremely racist stuff. Uh, my thing is how to you can win, how you can deal with these people and negotiate with them and get that money. So it was more positive. Plus, I didn't slam anybody. It's just a cultural issue once you get to know them. Sure thing, Baroque. Was an addict for 13 years of my life thinking about starting an addiction specialist business. Well, you know the territory. You know what people go through. Now, it wasn't. I don't think it was Leslie. Um, I'm not sure. She actually left a comment. I don't want to come out of here. It's going to probably be one of the last four because she did it last week. She was actually coming in and helping people outside of the live chat. So, yeah, because the thing is with cultures is I've dated a lot of women from different cultures. And whenever I date someone from a different culture, I just tend to watch and observe because it's funny. As big as I am, I go to dinner and I just sit there and I'd be like, oh, he's real chill. Sooner or later, they're going to start talking like I'm not there. And that's when I get the juicy information. This even happened. I was the only member of a book club. I was the only male member. And after a little while, they forgot I was there and just started talking about all kinds of stuff. And then they look, oh, sorry. Oh, no, keep going on. This is good information. I'm taking notes. And this is, you know, the reality of it. Yes, yeah, she did have a truck business. Hey, Glenn and I drive a semi, but I have an auto mechanic background. I like JDM and Euro import carts and customizations. Well, part of that is, and, you know, uh, let's talk about how you can get knowledge or how you have knowledge. All right. Like, uh, I have an Audi S4. And it's a 2004. Now, if you don't know anything about this car, it's just an old car, right? But if you know, there is a coat. <laughs> Let me just go coat like following of these cars. 
Like I said, most people don't know. I was getting gas one day, and this German dude, and he was German, he had accents, and he was like, whoa, you got the real car, you know, because uh, it's got a V8 under there, and it's just crammed in the engine bay, and when it first came out, it did zero to 60 in like four point, it was like 5.1, which was really, really fast at the time. It's not that fast now. And then with some mods, you can make it get down to about 4.1 which is pretty fast for any car. And since I know about this car, and this is something that's just happened since I've owned it, I know about what tires to buy, I know about peelers. So once again, if you have that esoteric knowledge, you could flip it and make money because if I was gonna sell that car, I would not put it on Craigslist. I would post it in one of the groups I'm in, I would uh, bring a trailer, that's a popular website for these cars, and being part of the culture, you know where to sell. And essentially, uh, I remember I gave someone a piece that I really didn't care about, and I sold some tires in the group. So there's a lot to be having specialized knowledge. Uh, let's see, Tanker Green. Let's see. It's a V8. Yep. What's up, Tony Lee? And the 2.7 twin turbo is the one that a lot of people like because it will, you can, um, you can tune it out. I mean, people are getting 700. People are getting um, 800 horsepower out of these cars. I love the fact that my industry is something I love teaching music. Let me tell you, Cody Wyman, there's this chick. Uh, I can't think of her name, but at 16, she started teaching instruments to kids. And between the ages of 16 and 18, she got to the point where she had 90 students at $30 an hour. And she was 18 years old. She's never had a job. So there, there's a lot of things that you can do. Okay, so let's get back to the second thing. So let's see. And I'm going to try to be a little bit better. So you, you're on your second stage validation. Uh, 30, 60 days. Of making offers. Now, this is going to either make or break your business. Now, 30 to 60 days is not a lot of time to devote to this business because that's going to tell you a lot. If 30 to 60 days and you get people to accept 20% to 30% of your offers, Well, you got a, uh, that's a weird thumbs up, but you good to go. Because let's say you talk to 300 people in those 30 to 60 days and 20% to 30% said yes. So you now know that if you talk to 900 people, even with the, your percentage rate staying the same, you're going to make more money. That's called getting your numbers. So many business people have no clue to what their numbers are. They just go out and try to make money. And then when it doesn't work out, they say that this didn't work. So that's what your second stage validation will do for you. And if you go through that, then you will be successful. Uh, I don't really agree about that passion thing because I've seen too many people started businesses that they knew about. They had industry knowledge. They had extraterritorial knowledge. And these businesses were successful. And these businesses were not their passion. Roosevelt Roberts, hello. I'm retired early. I am looking to start my own security business as far as bodyguard and general security. Do you have experience with that? 
Okay, good deal, Cody. All right, um, for those of you who are here, and this will be going on tonight, who want to start a business, you have the 24-hour startup and 30 days to 2,500 fast start program. It is now currently $89. It will be that for a few hours after the stream, so you can go ahead and grab that. because that gives you a detailed blueprint of what we're talking about. All right, so now that you've gone out and you've gotten past your, let's see, your validation, so now this is when we get into some funny stuff. We get into a name, we get into legal structure, We get into banking. Now, I want to be clear. Until you go through this validation process, don't do any of this. I mean, you can make up something real quick, but until you go through this validation process and you get consistent money, don't get into the legal structure, don't get into the banking, because you don't know if this thing is going to fly. So there's no point in you spending the money and spending. I mean, last business I set up, I was in the bank like for an hour while they were doing all that stuff because you can't bring in your own information anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. You got They got to go in there and look it up, print up their own stuff, and it's a pain. But that's what you got to do. And it is very hard for a new company to put someone as, quote, the manager. You could try it. But um, <laughs> depending on who's at the bank, that may or may not fly. And I can tell you that's not going to fly with Chase. It's not going to fly at all with Chase. Uh, let's see. You're funny, Gunji. Lamode, I made 1200 in my men's clothing store last year, that's enough validation. Should I keep going or should I try something else? Well, how many offers are you making per month? Because once again, you got to get your numbers. You got to build your numbers early on. Uh, photography, and window, photography and video went from a passion, a hobby to a passion, but never became a business. This is one of the problems that happens with people trying to turn passions into businesses. And I've heard many people say these words. As long as I'm doing it on the side and it's fun and I get to do it whenever, I love it. But the minute that I have to be responsible for it and to make be on time to be responsible for people, that kind of turns it from a passion. So there's a lot of people who feel that way. And that's the big hiccup. Arden Bolden, determination is more important than passion. Passion changes, but when you're determined to do something, you have it set in your mind that you're doing it. Exactly. Oh, I work one hour a day. Every day I have a full-time job and a wife and kids. Okay. Um, so you're doing like 20 hours a month. It's not bad. Try adding another hour and see what that does to your bottom line. Uh, Baroque, <laughs> what kind of offers do you mean? I mean, hey, will you buy my service? Will you let me cut your grass? Will you um, buy these donuts? I mean, that's an offer. Whenever you say, hi, Mr. Customer or Mrs. Customer, my name is Glendon Cameron, and let me introduce you. I mean, that's an offer. you got to make a lot of those offers. Uh, so many people are looking for, quote, word of mouth, and where people just show up, and it happens, and it's great, but... What if you don't have word of mouth? What if you're so new that there's, you know, word of mouth usually takes time to develop. And it's great once you get it, but it usually you got to put some time in it or you got to be in the industry where it just works. Okay. Tanker Green, what about if you bought a quality product that the growler works you? Oh, uh, what is that, Tanker Green? <laughs> I have no, here, here's another thing. And if you're going to do physical products, there are certain products that are what I call albatrosses. 
just because you bought them super cheap does not mean that they're going to sell. I'm sorry to tell you that. You may have bought a turkey. I don't know what it is. Uh, be real. Selling is hard for introverts. Well, part of that is personal development and getting over yourself. Because if you want to be out here, because this is what's happening in How to Start a Business in 2018. If you're going to start a personal brand, you got to be the face of the brand. You got to make videos. You got to write blogs. You got to put a lot of stuff out. If you're going to start a physical product, people actually care about the person behind the products unless it's super cheap or something that's like throwaway money. But if, you know, someone's going to invest, you know, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, you're going to need a narrative for your brand. It's just it's like Bitcoin, the Tashi. That's a narrative. You need that when you want to sell high end stuff. It's taking about four months to get word of mouth. That's true. Yeah, it takes time. Uh, I don't really know the five guys story just yet. I do know that they advertise. Beer growler. I have no. He bought a jive turkey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going to have to do that. Uh, Archangel. So true. Determination over passion. I dedicate two hours, two hours minimum towards building my business. You got to put in the time. Uh, digital foot footage channel. What's your opinion of Gumroad, the selling platform for digital assets? Uh, I used to be very high on Gumroad. Um, I don't think it's good as it used to be. I think if you have one product, it's probably good. But if you have multiple products, it, it just will not support multiple products. It will be a pain in the ass. It really will. So that is part of it. All right. So let's see. Now let's get back to this start in the business. Because once you pass the second stage validation, now you need to work on branding. This is very, very important. You got to work on that. You're going to need a logo. Uh, you're going to need some gear. Definitely. Uh, teachable. Think if there's a lot of stuff uh, that you can get into. Now, I'm going to show you something. And this, this is funny, too. Um, like whenever I find a YouTube channel that's growing very quickly, I, I just want to know why, you know, and this, this is something I do frequently. And I found this channel today and it just popped up in my feed. And it, it was like, I mean, it, it, it's a, it's a crazy channel. All right. So I'm going to, now I'm, I'm going to show you some stuff that he's doing that is really, really good. All right. So let's kind of go in here. I mean, that's just right up in your face. I mean, dude's got a brand. He came out of it. He's selling after workout, pre-workout gears. Uh, and the thing is, I looked at this and I was just like, I mean, once again, this is branding. I mean, he really, really has come on. And I don't think he's been around that long, too. So 2013, so 2014, 2015, well, 16. So it's been around three years, but he's got all of these views. But the thing is, he's, he's really worked on his branding. I mean, and then it's just it's just crazy because I already know that some of y'all are going to uh, binge watch this channel because it's just very fascinating. Let's see which ones. Dang, joining a prison game and dropping the soap. But 
he really has built up something here. It is really crazy. But getting back to it, you got to get the brand. Um, you know, I don't have, quote, I'm not going after that audience because a lot of his audience are gang members, uh, people who are facing time, people who are getting out of jail. So, and look, the after prison show. Once again, look at this. I mean, YouTube is doing a lot. So apparently there's a lot of people who want to know about these topics and subjects, but they, they've all branded. They've got kind of a street appeal. And one of the things that I'm going to do this year is get do a much better job of branding Hustlers Kung Fu. Because I really just kind of lackadaisically just put it out there. But branding is super, super important. And branding gives you the ability to charge 30 to 1,000% more for the same service. Yep, true story. True story. Uh, let's see. Make sure that we're there. I'm finally motivated to write my first book. Go ahead with your bad self, Mo Grizzly. What is the best website to making clothing for your logo? There is no such animal. And what I mean, and I'm not being facetious, is once you get it, you know, like I said, I have a two to five year journey in the fashion. I've learned so much last year and I've just really learned how much I didn't know and how much more I'll have to put into it. But I'm doing the brand with courses. So I have some protection. I have a little cover because it's going to take me a long time to really learn this stuff. Um, this will be the next shirt that's coming out and I'm probably going to make it much bigger because one of the things is when you use like one of these online services, you're very limited in many ways. Very, very limited because I want this bigger and I thought it was really as big as and it's just not as big as I wanted it. And then when I go to someone I can talk to and say, look, this is what I want. I want this to be this big. I want it to be the logo to be proportional to all shirts. I can actually get that done. Oh, Ganja, that's Big Herc. Okay, y'all already know. I just found him today. Albert Lau, what with, with the programs you have, do they break down step by step what you have to do to have success in the programs you have for the $4.95 per month, the best one to get it to achieve faster results? Well, let's have a little chit chat about that. All right, so let's get in here. One of the things that I am doing is selling based upon where you are. Like you may not even need the 495 course. I mean, the, essentially, let me just show you because it'll be easier. The four, this is the 499 course, Hustle Camp. You get every course, you get the gear, you get to attend live experiences. I can't say that's going to be the fastest way for you to go because I don't know you. I don't know how you learn. I don't know how you take direction. So there's a lot of things that are a part of that. So I would say for now, you should get the 24 hour startup program because I don't know how much you have to learn. I don't know what your skill sets are. And it's a very challenging to say, well, yeah, take this program and you're going to get a lot of results. And I also would say even before that, you should get the superior mindset bundle because here's one of the things that I've learned from teaching thousands and thousands of people is those with the better mindset, even if they don't have the natural intellect, they typically do much better. So I would definitely say grab that first if your money is funny and then you can do this one because it really depends on what do you want to do. So I'll ask you this question. Alec, Albert Lau, what exactly do you want to do? What kind of business do you want to start? Be real. Yeah, I'm subscribed to him. <laughs> Rock a socket in YouTube time. That's a long time. 
Be real, he has the clothing. Yes, he does. He's doing a lot of stuff. Nate's point of view. I love that channel. He talks about prison stories, red leathers regarding prison. He's funny. Oh, uh, God, you big. I mean, you see, y'all already knew. Y'all y'all held out on me. Y'all didn't let me know. Uh, what happens when you drop the soap? <laughs> It's smart since we're in the prison, Pop County. Uh, how do you brand shows within the YouTube channel? Actually, you don't. You pick a few topics and you stick with them because the way YouTube works, if you have like seven shows a week, it's, uh, it's not going to work. Art and brand is very important. It's the story behind what you do, the who, the what. Yep. Well, once again, Tanker Green, you got to do because one of the things that happens and it's really hard for resellers to understand this and appreciate this. Just because you bought a product super cheap doesn't mean you can sell it. You ask yourself, why did I get it at 40 percent off? Because that has been my experience. I went to this auction. I bought these weird lawnmowers. I got them super cheap and I had the hardest time selling them. And then I went and got some regular lawnmowers, gas, nothing really special about them. They were green. They looked real shiny. I bought them for 30. I was able to sell them for 99.99 all day long. So, I mean, it just depends. I never allowed. Thanks. I appreciate the wanting to start a detailing business. That's something I'm passionate about. Like you said, it's funny. If your money's funny. All right. So now that we have some more information, then... Uh, what we would do is I will uh, s take you down this little path because there's, you know, because I, I really have to improve the navigation of Hustler, Hustle Camp. Um, so what I would do is for you, I would do the 24 hour startup at the current pricing, and this is why. Let's see, did that open up? Oh, I wasn't even in the bundles. And I'm gonna even show you what course you need to get in. You need to get into this one. 30 days to 2,500 is designed to help you start any business, and this will give you some good guidelines and pointers. Because if you're going to start a detailing business, one of the things you're going to have to do is build your repeat customer base. That's going to be the way that you make consistent money because I live in a pretty nice neighborhood. And there is like one, two, three, and then there's a little another car wash. There's four car washes. And I don't go to the, these two down here because they're not as detailed as the one over here and the one in Dunwoody because I have these nice rims and stuff and I want them to look fresh and they sometimes like miss big spots and I'm like, hey, would you come here and do it? I go to those two places. I don't have to tell them to do that and it's the same money because they have better servants. So, but I have two cars and usually I spend 70, I spend about 140 to 200 some bucks a month at the same car wash. So by getting, because this is what you got to do to design your detail business. You got to design it for customer retention because month one, you get 10 people. But if you keep all 10, then month two, you get 20. You keep all 20 and month three, you get, you know, at the end of the year, you're doing like 400 cars a month at, you know, let's, let's just say you can't get what folks get here for a car wash. But if you're doing. 400 cars a month. Where is my calculator? Because I like to hold my calculator up for this stuff. There we go. So 400 cars a month times 20. Really? That's $8,000. That's if you wash 400 cars a month one time. And that's not including tips. That's 20 bucks. I'm not doing it like the 30 that they charge here because you may not be able to get that in most places, but I'm quite sure you can get 20. And then you times it times two. 
That's 16 grand a month. And if your overhead is like two grand a month, and then you got to pay people, I mean, I see you taking home $10,000 a month. But it's a lot of work. A lot of people don't want to work like that. They don't want to work like a Mexican. They don't want to do it, but it's there. So definitely um, you go ahead and grab this one. And that will be the course for you. Because, see, uh, one of the things is, uh, let's talk about Hustle Camp. All right. When I'm done with this, and it's going to take me probably six more months to really um, get it done the way that I want to. This is going to be a full entrepreneur university. So you'll be able to come to Hustle Camp and go through step one, step two, step three, step four, and start your business. But what's going to happen is I'm going to teach you how to make money very fast. Now, you're not going to make 20, 30, 40, 100,000, be driving a Lambo. But what you will do is get the basics where you, because like I said, on the next jump, which will probably be in three or four months, it's going to be 10 grand, that you would be able to go through Hustle Camp Make your 10 grand back plus a profit the first year. And it takes me getting the right people. Everyone, it, Hustle Camp isn't for everybody. But I want you to think about this. Going to college, like Emory University is 30 grand a year. So half a semester, I don't know if they're a quarter hours, whatever, but half of the year, you pay 15 grand for half of your freshman year. And if you don't finish your freshman year, your sophomore year, your junior year, your senior year, guess what? You wasted your money. So for, and that's going to be the sales pitch. It's like for less than half a year of college, you can have a full fledged business course. And that's why I'm building it out like that. Expect more changes to come. But for those of you who are trying to get started, this is today's special. It's the 24 hour startup. The link is the first link under the video. And this pricing will be available for a few hours after the video. And then I'm going to take it back up to 199 or 250 or whatever it was. So the time to get it is now. All right, so let me close some of these windows. We got a lot of windows open. <laughs> All right. What's up, Cartel? You can watch the replay. Arden Bowden, one of my best friends, has a detailing business, started off with a pressure washer in high school. Six years later, his business is worth over 800 grand. You can do it. What's up, Michael Dennis? What's up, Donovan Green? Uh, Bell Stacy seven. You you can't copyright a recipe. No one's gonna sue you for a recipe. All right, be real. <laughs> Glendon FM. That's that's pretty interesting. I almost did that as a podcast name, but no, I didn't do that. I did not do that. Uh, it's interesting because there there was so many things. What's up, Malarnia76? What's going on? All right. So there it is. This is the presentation. I dropped a few jewels for you. Uh, what you can do is go into the video, get the 24-hour fast start deal, watch this video, get some jewels on how to start your business. Pretty much. I mean... If you like, if you start a car wash business, and the thing is, think in terms of two and three years. Don't think of terms of weeks and months. That that will kill your motivation. But someone just put in there six years. His, uh, his, you know, he started in high school, so that means that this person is probably twenty four years old with an eight hundred thousand dollar a year business. He is taking home three to four hundred grand at 24. So think about that. It's very doable. It's out there. Okay. So I'm about to bounce. Be sure to subscribe.
be sure to give me your phone number for the text notification squad so you don't miss any of these streams and be sure to subscribe to the channel and after this renders leave a comment i'll be interested to hear what you think about this stream all right so with that i'm about to bounce i will catch you guys later